and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel Medical Classes by Dr. Srinidhi Kumar K. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel and also please give your valuable comments. So dear friends, today we will discuss about one of the important case studies which is related to developmental delay. Okay, so today we will have a case discussion on developmental delay. So let us see the case first and then we will have a discussion on the same. Now this is a case, a three year old boy delivered by full term normal delivery and non consanguineous marriage. And in this case there is a significant birth history, birth history is very significant and there is history of birth asphyxia also with the prolonged stay in the NICU for jaundice with hearing and vision affection and failure to thrive. Now this is a very typical birth history we have got, birth history is very typical. Birth history is significant birth history there means significant birth asphyxia is also there at the time of the birth and thereafter child had got a prolonged stay in the NICU for jaundice according to the parents and there is also hearing and vision problem and uh, presently child is also having failure to thrive. Birth weight of the child is 1.7 kg. So 1.7 kg birth weight may be child is IUGR or may be child is low birth weight baby because it is just a full term. So full term so it may not be preterm okay so as it mentioned full term baby so it is not a preterm so it may be IUGR or it may be full term low birth weight anyway uh, uh, the birth weight is 1.7 kg uh, maybe IUGR uh, mother they don't know exactly complicated with the seizures okay so there is also seizures there is also seizures uh, as a residual part of the perinatal insult maybe because of the perinatal insult so there is a seizure also along with the routine global developmental delay now this is a present situation of the baby child has got the history of uh, uh, prolonged neonatal stay uh, NSU stay there is also history of uh, birth asphyxia birth history is there significant vision is affected and now the hearing is also affected child is also having failure to thrive birth weight is 1.7 kg and uh, maybe IUGR and there is seizure okay the so seizure may be attributed to perinatal insult which has happened and presently child is having global developmental delay child has got a global developmental delay now two months later there is seizures which is coming in three episodes okay first seizure was there at the time of the birth and then after two, two months again the child has got the seizures which is come almost all in three episodes how many days of interval we don't know then there is also feeding difficulties in early neonatal period mother complains that it's very difficult to feed the baby baby is not feeding well or not sucking well in the early part of the neonatal period that is because of NICU stay and uh, uh, so, uh, this birth asphyxia and maybe the contributing factors anyway we will see further uh, history of omitting and there is also lethargy during the first three days of the life this is what mother says again there is also history of omitting and child is also lethargic during the first three days of the life first three days are very crucial <coughs> there we are getting this particular history when you ask about the antenatal history, mother says that mother not gained much weight in the pregnancy. Usually we expect total of some 10 kgs, around 10 kgs of weight gain. But mother says it is not up to the mark and uh, this is evidenced by IUGR baby. Baby is also IUGR, we know that. So this child has got the normal cry according to mother and whatever the reports available. The child has got the normal cry and also put on the breast immediately. Okay, put on the breast immediately. Now there is some mismatching, isn't it? Birth history, uh, birth history is significant, they are telling. And uh, then uh, again, they are telling that there's a normal cry and baby was put on the breast immediately. Anyway, we will look into that. Family is low socioeconomical status. Family is having low socioeconomical status. 
Now CT scan shows that there is collection of the blood in the cranium. A CT scan was done and uh, it is evidence evidence are showing that there is a collection of the blood in the cranium. Now at one year he is not able to hold the head. Now these are the developmental history we got. At one year he is not able to hold the head. Suppose he has to hold the head, head control and neck control head control should be there by three months but it is up to one year he is not able to do that but could able to roll over by the end of one year he is able to roll over but he is not able to hold the head anyway rollover is also delayed rollover is expected at five or six months it is at one month okay uh, it is at one year now happening okay so although child is not able to hold the head child is able to roll over now this is quite interesting and there is hypertonia in the child if you see the limbs and all hypertonia is there and birth weight as i told 1.7 kg birth weight so with this much of history you know the question comes um, how we will go into approach to this particular baby okay there may be a lot of things to explain but we will go one by one so that uh, we will be knowing how to take the developmental history now here what mother says on the first day one day old baby see if you look into the complaint here okay so what is the complaint history of vomiting and there is lethargy during the first three days of the life we will take this part first okay mother is telling that child had vomiting and as well as lethargy in the first three days, one, two, three, first three days, child is not able to feed. Okay, uh, although uh, according to the normal criteria, child is not feeding well and there is vomiting. Now look into that. What may be the cause? Okay, on the first day old, one day old baby, child is vomiting. Okay, uh, on the first day old, one day old baby will omit the milk. Usually in the first day, child will not omit the milk. Okay, because the reasons are many. Because amount of the feed that child takes itself is very less. Okay, so if the child is omitting, it may be something other. Maybe meconium fluid or uh, maybe some other uh, consumption of the maternal blood, etc. Maybe omitted out. But uh, omitting the pure breast milk on the first day of the life, quite unusual. Okay, so usually no. So there may be a significant omitting in the first few days. Okay, now other than GIT causes, whether now we are only focusing on the GIT causes. Okay, therefore we are telling that breast milk is less, is, consumption is less, no chance of omitting. But do you think that some other causes other than GIT that can induce omitting in the first day of the life? Okay, so other than GIT, the other causes should be kept in mind, like most likely any surgical causes, suppose even surgical causes, or there may be some certain neurological causes okay so now omitting on the first day is it because of any surgical causes such history is not available okay omitting on the first day is it due to neurological causes uh, definitely maybe because it may not be GIT on the first day so look at the point that the omitus is green or white now look at the next point so now we come to a conclusion that most probably this omitting is because of neurological cause because child also giving the history of this uh, birth asphyxia and all those things now look at look the point that now just ex, uh, ask inquire further how the omitus is looking omitus is it green or white or is it bilious or is it non bilious is it associated with the upper abdominal distension or baby has passed the stool or not so these are some of the questions that you have to ask now okay because we want to get some more information on the omitting. On the first day, mother had mother has a complaint of omitting. Child is omitting. Okay. Now omitting is also now what mother is telling that omitting is also associated with the allergy, uh, lethargy, and also seizure, and the cry of the baby is also there. So now, if you combine all that together. Omitting may not be due to GAT. Omitting is not because of surgical causes. Omitting is basically because of neurological system, no doubt. Again, the omitting is also associated with the lethargy. And omitting is also associated with the seizure. Now, these two things when combined together, 
Now it is almost all very clear that so this is a omitting which is related to central nervous system. Okay, so this is something related to central nervous system. Okay, now usually the omitting which is a projectile, the omitting which is projectile will not be seen in case of neonate in normally when the normally child omit or regurgitate it's not projectile at all if the suppose the baby is having a projectile omitting projectile omitting most probably you will have only two causes in newborn number one is it is because of the central cause because central cause there will be projectile omitting without any nausea and uh, watering of the mouth etc suddenly there will be omitting and that will be projectile Another important cause for the projectile is a congenital pyloric stenosis. Okay, so if the child has typically omitting with a lethargy, okay, so we are now suspecting about a CNS cause. In the CNS, usually it can be seen. Child is having lethargy, child is having omitting, and child is also having the seizure. Therefore, we are thinking about uh, this uh, neurological system and uh, child is also crying normally no problem uh, but omitting is also little projectile so maybe it is neurological but child is also having omitting and lethargy now we have to think about another point also child with lethargy and omitting omitting with the lethargy could be also seen in case of the metabolic disorders okay it could be also seen in case of metabolic disorders and some of the metabolic disorders also may lead to seizure sometimes Okay, so now again about this omitting, we have to rethink about our uh, diagnosis, diagnosis or, or approach. Okay, so we cannot strictly stick on to uh, CNS now. It may be even seen in case of metabolic disorders. Okay, it may be a inborn errors of metabolism or it may be acquired or transient. It may be seen. Okay, so it could be a sepsis also, sometimes sepsis. Another is uh, this whole phenomenon, omitting, lethargy, Caesar, okay, everything may be seen in case of sepsis. Sepsis leading to meningitis may also lead to this particular problem. Sepsis leading to meningitis may also lead to this particular presentation. Okay, this is one part. So one of the complaint of the mother is baby was omitting on the first three days of the life, and that we have analyzed what it could be. We have not yet come to the final conclusion. Now, there is also history of IUGR. We know that there is also history of IUGR. So that means there is some abnormality starting from the fetal age, isn't it? IUGR, when the baby is IUGR, IUGR has two uh, three types, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and as well as mixed. So it may be symmetrical, it may be asymmetrical. That means it may be hypoplastic, or it may be nutritional, or it may be mixed. So whatever may be the cause, so one thing is quite ensured that baby has got some problem from the antenatal period itself okay from the antenatal period itself baby has got some problem probably that have been continued to the postnatal life also or during the time of the delivery mm -hmm. so now we want to know does mother is responsible for this poor fetal growth or fetus itself is responsible for this poor growth now IUGR is there this IUGR whether it is because of maternal factor or whether it is because of fetal factors okay so this baby was never normal and something which is bad is going on throughout the pregnancy one thing is very clear whatever may be the cause from the maternal cause or from the fetal, fetal cause one thing is quite sure this fetus has got some problem since beginning itself therefore it has got IUGR and that is therefore it also has got the problems immediately after birth so this child has got normal cry this child has got normal cry and also put on the breast immediately okay so therefore there is no birth injury so one thing is, is um, quite ensured that there is no much birth injury okay so although mother is in the giving 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 the history that some something has been happened during the time of the birth whatever she is telling but baby cried immediately after birth baby was put on the breast immediately after the birth okay so these two things suggest that baby was almost all all right at the time of the birth that means not having any severe injuries or birth aspects etc it could be there may be some transient for a few seconds or something like that 
anyway this part the history was given by the mother which is quite confusing anyway we will analyze that but looking at this situation now uh, there is no history of any birth injuries but still something is wrong with the mother okay but still something is wrong with the mother why mother has not gained the weight now again this is the problem iugr baby okay it is delivered we don't know whether the fetal problem is there or maternal problem is there but definitely some problem is there with the mother because why mother has not gained the weight usually we know that uh, normally mother gain the weight up to 10 to 11 kgs she may not gain the weight due to nutritional causes or maternal anemia or maybe intrauterine infections pregnancy induced hypertension oligohydromniosis emesis etc that we know nowadays one of the most common cause of iugr is if the mother has got the malnutrition in her childhood and adolescence age now this is also important mother may be having good nutrition during the time of the pregnancy but if the mother has got poor nutrition in her childhood period and in her adolescence period that also indirectly affects the weight gain during the pregnancy and this is latest does the mother is short now again you have to ask whether the mother is short stunted or wasted okay the commonest cause of maternal malnutrition these are some of the commonest cause of a maternal uh, malnutrition anyway we see further maybe the fetus itself is abnormal and mother is good it is another possibility because we don't know whether it's a fetal cause or maternal cause so fetus uh, may be abnormal and mother may be normal baby was apparently normal at the time of the birth isn't it according to the history so perinatal nothing was happening so it may be either antenatal or postnatal one thing is very clear now as in the history it is very clearly told that baby cried immediately after the birth baby was put on the breast immediately after the birth perinatally there is no much problem okay during the perinatal period or during the um, uh, period of delivery okay there is no much problem so whatever happened is definitely either before the perinatal period or after the perinatal period that means before the delivery or after the delivery during the delivery in this case it seems that nothing has been happened nothing has been happened all the mother is telling that second day third day fourth uh, first three days mother child has got a fetus has got uh, baby has got vomiting etc okay and later onwards baby was kept in the nicu for jaundice but immediately after the birth at the time of the birth nothing has happened according to the history nothing has happened according to the history so mother is uh, uh, either antenatal or so problem should be either antenatal or either postnatal now mother was discharged on day 3 in this case mother was discharged on day 3 now this is again important day 3 itself mother is discharged okay but mother is complaining that for the first three days there is vomiting lethargy etc but baby was discharged okay baby was discharged um, on day three but what happened in this case is but again the mother come back with the jaundice after three days teen din ke andar hi jo hai usko discharge kiya shayad wo persuade kiye hoge ya kuch pressure lagaye hoge ki hum jayenge jayenge bolke to jo bhi a precaution bol karke jo hai प्रिकॉशन दे करके उसको बेच दिया होगा बट आफ्टर थ्री डेज अगेन मदर कम बैक एंड नाउ द कंप्लेन इज जॉन्ड इज मदर कंप्लेन द जॉन्ड इज विच स्टार्ट क्वाइट स्लोअर एंड लेटर डेवलप एंड ब्रिंग दैम इन टू हॉस्पिटल ठीक है तीन दिन के बाद धीरे 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 जॉन्डिस डेवलप हुआ एंड देन इट बिकम्स इंक्रीजिंग प्रोग्रेसिव एंड विच कॉज द मोर जॉन्डिस देन दिस ब्रिंग्स द Uh, parents to the hospital now we have to think about this particular jaundice also okay so generally uh, three days afterwards if you develop a jaundice uh, typically it is counted under the physiological jaundice okay or sometime it may intermix with some of the pathological causes also it is very difficult to identify that time you have to go for the blood investigation and uh, examination of the general condition of the baby now could it be a breastfeeding jaundice is it possible 
ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग नॉट ब्रेस्ट मिल्क जॉन्डिस ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग जॉन्डिस ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग जॉन्डिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द इनसफिशियंट फीडिंग इन द लो बर्थ वेट बेबी दिस बर्थ वेट इज लो बर्थ वेट नो डाउट इन द लो बर्थ वेट बेबी बिकॉज ऑफ इनसफिशियंट फीडिंग देर मे बी चांस ऑफ डेवलपिंग ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग जॉन्डिस वेर द ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग अमाउंट इज लेस दैट इज रिलेटेड टू द जॉन्डिस ब्रेस्ट मिल्क जॉन्डिस मीन्स इट सम कंटेंट विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द ब्रेस्ट मिल्क इट्स इट सेल्फ इज ब्लॉकिंग द ग्लुक्रोनॉल ट्रांसफरेंस इन सेम एंड रिलेटेड टू ब्लॉकेज इन द कॉन्जुगेशन एंड दैट लीज टू जॉन्डिस दिस टू आर डिफरेंट सो वेदर देर इज ए पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग जॉन्डिस मे बी वी डोंट नो नो अदरवाइज दिस इज एन एब्सोल्युटली नॉर्मल बेबी एंड सडनली इफ द बेबी गेट्स द मैनिफेस्टेशन देन वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट द मेटाबॉलिक डिसऑर्डर्स दिस इज वन मोर प्रॉब वन मोर पॉइंट दैट वी हैव टू कंसिडर नो normal baby normally cried normally breastfeeding but suddenly child is developing all these problems okay jaundice then definitely metabolic problems should be always considered metabolic means sudden appearance sudden disappearance reappearance okay ct scan shows that there is a collection of the blood ah now comes the point ct scan shows that mean time they have done the ct scan in the ct scan there comes collection of the blood in the cranium Okay, now we got some clue about jaundice. Why this jaundice suddenly appears after three days? Okay, in a normal child. Okay, CT scan shows that there is a collection of the blood in the cranium. Now the question comes: Could it be a cause of the jaundice? Collection of the blood is there. That blood is undergoing hemolysis, and that hemolysis produces a lot of iron. Because of that iron, a lot of bilirubin, bilirubin form. Yes, there may be a possibility. Just like cephalo hematoma. But if so. but if so with the jaundice it should be associated with there would be paler and maybe a focal seizure if this is the cause collection of the blood itself is the cause for this jaundice jaundice should not be manifested as a single manifestation along with the jaundice there should be paler also because a lot of blood has been lost no? that's why the baby contains very little amount of the blood 80 ml per kg will be there so definitely baby will develop the paler and there may be also focal seizures also because of the pressure over the cranium by uh, exerted by the uh, hematomas okay now as we know uh, subdural hematomas subdural hematomas they generally they take uh, some time to get collect along with a seizure and paler it develop the jaundice uh, which is not exactly seen in the case usually subdural hematoma we find this the pattern subdural hematoma usually will not develop suddenly it takes some time but when it develops it develops with the paler and also later there will be collection uh, there, there will be seizures also but that particular pattern is not seen in this case but ct scan shows the collection of the blood let us see further now the 2 month old child start with a seizure as for this case now what is given in this case is first uh, time there is a seizure and after there is no seizure uh and after two months child started with the seizure again okay three episodes were there now the question comes uh the causes may be metabolic one thing because for, for the seizures number two cause may be any congenital malformation which is developing okay or maybe some fever okay fever associated now if the fever is there uh, then definitely we have to think about uh, intracranial infections okay but such any history is not available here. such history is not available now does the malnourishment causes hypoglycemia now suppose mother has got malnourishment suppose and because of that child baby develops or baby develops hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is causing the seizure if this is the cause maybe we don't know okay now this is a malnourished baby no doubt does it lead to hypoglycemia which leads to seizure this is what i am asking but if so in this case the first presentation will be always lethargy drowsy especially in the morning hours and if not picked up it may lead to seizure so that means if actually hypoglycemia hypoglycemia means it comes under the metabolic problems hypoglycemia hyperglycemia hypocalcemia hypercalcemia all can cause a seizure 
Now, as this child is IUGR, that means malnourished. Whether because of malnourishment, there is hypoglycemia in the baby, and because of that hypoglycemia, the seizure developed. Can you predict like that? If that would be the case, that means if the seizure is because of metabolic problems, then first there should be always lethargy. Then child become drowsy, especially in the morning hours. Okay, then only the seizure develops. Seizure directly not develop. Just like in hypoglycemia, which happens in diabetes, when it is in older older patients also, the patient feel lethar lethargic first, then drowsy, and then he fall on consciousness. Okay, there may be seizures during that time. Similarly, the child also. So this pattern is not seen in this baby. Therefore, this seizure is not because of uh, any metabolic uh, problems like hypoglycemia. Metabolic problems may be inborn errors of metabolism, acquired errors of metabolism, or hypoglycemia like electrolyte imbalance. Um, also, that means hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia. They are also comes under the metabolic problems only. Now, if you look into the further in this case, the child is having the chronic malnutrition, no doubt, and likely to have the caloric malnutrition. This caloric malnutrition is an uh, adopted malnutrition. Okay, so while protein mal energy malnutrition or protein malnutrition is a mal adapted malnutrition, so all the complications like hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, and hypothermia, etc., will be there. Now, this is the difference between a hypoglycemia that can happen in case of a IUGR baby and hypoglycemia IUGR baby or malnourished baby, or hypoglycemia that develops in a protein energy. Malnutrition child. Okay, so दोनों जगह में जो hypoglycemia हो सकता है, जो एक IUGR baby है, जिसमें malnourishment की वजह से जो hypoglycemia आएगा, it is called as caloric malnutrition, and it is called as adopted malnutrition, adopted malnutrition. Okay, but PM में जो malnutrition आता है, it is a mal adopted malnutrition. वहाँ पे adaptation भी नहीं है, mal adapted malnutrition. So the complications like hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia and hypothermia can occur there. But in a user baby, such complication cannot occur. Again, the chance of a seizure because of a malnourished, malnourishment induced hypoglycemia in this a user baby is also ruled out. So this child looks like a chronic adopted malnutrition. So complications like a uh, like hypoglycemia are less likely because a user is not a user. So he is tolerated or he is adopted to overcome this hypoglycemia. He knows how to overcome this hypoglycemia. Okay, because he is going to be trained from the antenatal period. He is trained. He is a little bit older. Okay, now what about the chance of seizure in a malnourished child due to hypocalcemia? Is it maybe because of hypocalcemia? Okay, because the rickets is seen in a well-growing baby or malnourished. Now the question comes. Rickets जो है, usually rickets is because of the calcium problems and all those things, vitamin D calcium problems. No, the rickets what we always say, ricket is seen in. Do you think rickets is seen in a well-growing baby or malnourished child? So ricket is always seen in well-growing baby. ठीक है, rickets कहाँ पे मिलता है? Well-growing baby. Okay, malnourished baby में rickets नहीं मिलते, because the malnourished with the rickets is always pathological and mostly renal. Okay, so normal child should be get uh, should not get uh, rickets if he is malnourished. So is it calcium deficient rickets? Now the question comes. I think you understand this. A malnourished usually ricket, the nutritional rickets होता है, that is most commonly seen in normal babies, normally growing babies. And if a malnourished baby is having the rickets, it is not the nutritional rickets. Rather, it may be non-nutritional or refractory rickets, like renal rickets, etc. Okay, so a malnourished baby having calcium problem uh, should be thought as some of the refractory rickets. Okay, not the nutritional rickets. <coughs> Now. Hypocalcemia may be rickettic hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, or it may be calcium deficient hypoglycemia. So she is taking milk, which is a source of calcium. Okay, so this we will see later. Now. 
No. One minute. Yes, we'll continue from here. Now, which is a remote symptom might have been because of the seizure. Remote cause may be also silent and active. So this uh, we will take after a short break.